If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio. And that brings me on to my next point, is that what I think they'll do is they'll introduce teams like Dubai FC, UAE, whatever. They'll bring in Sydney or Shanghai and they'll bring in Tokyo and Beijing and they'll probably be a Brazil team, as my friend mentioned earlier. Toronto might get put into that as well. And I think that's what they'll do is they'll kind of select these massive places with giant financial economies. Okay guys, hello and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be slightly different. We're going to be talking about the European Super League. Now, it is men's lifestyle, so that's why I will talk about it. I think it's uh, I think it's important to talk about things like this. I think it's going to affect millions of men's lives around the world. So, you know, and it bridges over to two or three topics that I want to talk about in this video such as sports is a scam or crypto or whatever and I'll, I'll give you guys a way at the end that you can benefit financially from this European Super League. Okay, it's going to be in the form of a crypto coin, so at least there's some positive news to look forward to there at the end. But one thing that I really wanted to do was break down the truth about this European Super League. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people on YouTube making videos and they're, they're coming at it from the football perspective, which I will too. But they have very, very limited business and entrepreneur kind of mindsets or viewpoints. And they're missing out some really key things of where I think this could go and what's the potential and everything else that surrounds it. And I don't think people are coming at it from like a logical point of view. So I'm going to break it down best I can. And obviously, like I said, give you guys some ways that you can benefit from this. Now, number one, what's happening for anybody who doesn't know, well, most of the top teams in Europe are all coming together. They're, they're forming what's going to be known as a breakaway football league where they all play against each other. You know, a standard league, standard tournament type of thing. And they all play against each other. And basically, it just houses all of the revenue from these top revenue clubs all in one place. You know, instead of playing these smaller teams and and having kind of what would be, with respect, coined lesser games or less big games or whatever, they're going to have a big game every single week, which means that all of the big clubs will collectively bring their revenues to one place, which means that everybody should should benefit. I mean, that's the dream. However, everybody is obviously pushing back against this. Everyone thinks this is a terrible idea. It's ruined kind of... You know, I'm going to come at this two points. Come at it. There's one half of me that has the old school football mindset, where my dad used to take me to games when I was like four years old. I met all the players, whatever. Then there's the other side where it is business orientated, where I, I see the benefits of this. Okay, financially, I don't agree with them, but my entrepreneur mindset is buzzing right now because I can see so much, so much potential. It's, ne it's negative potential, but it's massive potential. Okay. Now, to break it down, I'm a Man City fan. My team will end up in the Super League, as it seems right now. A um, little bit disappointed in the team. You know, it's, Man City has always been a family club. You know, we always take care of the community and whatnot. And as much as people say plastic fans, you know, Man City terrible fans, it's just not true, guys. Like, I, I remember going when we were in Division 2, and we had 32,000 fans every single week in the stadium. Like that's no other team in the country has done that. But they might not have gone down to that level, but we were in Division Two, which is now Division One, I, I believe, below the Championship. Thirty-two thousand fans every single week filling the stadium. You know, I, I was going on away games to Preston in the rain, and we were drawing one all, and people like Michael Brown scoring whatever. And then we went to Wembley, and I was there against Gillingham when Paul Dickoff scored that late that late equaliser. It, you know, it's moments like that where you think, well, I'll never see that again. You know, and my dad would take me, and obviously my dad recently passed away, as many of you know. And it's just really sad to think there's so many young boys and girls as well that will never get those memories now with their parents or relatives or friends or whatever. You know, that's, that will stick with me for life. I had some great weekends going away to all these different places and experiencing that and coming up through the leagues. And quite frankly, I've told you guys this a million times before, sports is a scam because you win the league and next year it gets wiped off clean slate 
and you have to win the league again or something to be seen as relevant. Like, look at Liverpool. Last season, they win the league. This season, it means nothing. Nobody cares about them. And that's my danger, is that when we were in Division 2, Division 1, the Championship, whatever, whatever it used to be called, and we got promoted to the Premier League and we still weren't very good, qualifying for, like, Europe or something feels like the best moment ever. Like, when Yaya Torre scored in the FA Cup, I went crazy. It was the first trophy Man City had won in like 50 years and everybody let us know about it. And now, like I'm watching City and obviously we can't do the quadruple now, but it looked like we were going to at one point. It kind of makes the game boring because you're like, well, what else is there to chase? Like you show up every week and you expect to win. And you've got players like Phil Foden that make it exciting. If we signed Haaland, you know, I'd probably watch a lot more games, but... It's just a certain point, it's almost like completing a video game where you go, well, what's the point now? And that's my danger with this European Super League. Is it like once you've won that once, who cares? You know, would it really matter? I guess not, because the Americans have got the NBA and the NFL, and that's what this is all about. You know, there's a whole bunch of Americans that are nothing against Americans, but they have a way of operating sports. And there's at least four or five of the UK clubs that are owned by Americans at the moment or have part ownerships, whatever. I think it includes Chelsea behind Abramovich. Um, I know Arsenal do. I know that United obviously do. You know, and you've got, uh, and Liverpool do as well. So you've got all these Americans that are trying to change it into a franchise. You know, and I've got a couple of theories as to where this goes, but I kind of want to retain the structure of this. Um, but basically, my my theory is, and a lot of people might not have seen this coming, that's why I wanted to make this video, is that they will have an Eastern and Western Conference split down the middle of the world map, okay? These two conferences will contain 12 to 14 teams each, so 28 in total. You will play all the teams in your region. This will only get to that point once they bring in things like Hyperloops and whatever, so the fans can travel to the games very, very quickly, you know. They're, they're on about putting one into London to Dubai, which will take 30 minutes, you know, which is, feels like a home game at that point, doesn't it? You know, in London, 30 minutes is just down the road on the tube, so that's, that's pretty crazy. It's like five stops, six stops, whatever, which is, uh, which is nuts to think, all right? And that brings me on to my next point, is that what I think they'll do is they'll introduce teams like Dubai FC, UAE, whatever, They'll bring in Sydney or Shanghai and they'll bring in Tokyo and Beijing and they'll probably be a Brazil team, as my friend mentioned earlier. They'll, and Toronto might get put into that as well. And I think that's what they'll do is they'll kind of select these massive places with giant financial economies and just say, OK, you make a team, we'll put you in. Like, for example, Man City own New York City FC, Melbourne. Um, there's an Asian team that we own as well. And it kind of seems like that was set up years in advance. It was like a power grab because New York City FC will 100% be added to this eventually. 100%. There's going to have to be an Australian team. It's just going to have to be. You know, their economy is so big, there's going to have to be a team put in. It will probably be Melbourne. You know, it could be Sydney, whatever. But I don't think Man City would have gone and bought a team to be part of their group and then be entered as one of the founders and not add them in in the future. And I just think that's what's going to happen. It's, it's just a monopoly on football that's taking place from all of these billionaires. And it is just a monopoly power grab. That's what it is. They want all the money for themselves. Now, a lot of people complained about teams like Tottenham and Arsenal being in there. It's revenue, guys. It's revenue. Like, West Ham were that close to being in there. If you check out West Ham's revenue, it's like the 20th best in the world, okay, for football teams, soccer teams. Had West Ham, had Tottenham probably not built the new stadium, it might have been West Ham that got called up to um, get involved in this tournament. But they asked for they asked for Tottenham instead. Maybe if Tottenham were based in Liverpool or something like that, maybe they would have gone with West Ham because it's obviously in the capital. It makes you know kind of more sense. You've got the whole of East London that would get on board with it. You know that would make some sense in some capacity. But nobody is an angel here. Like if West Ham got asked, they would do it. They would do it. Okay. And I have no disrespect for West Ham. I used to live around that area in Stratford. I loved it. I loved the club. I would support them if I didn't support Man City. But you th really think Karen Brady and the people at the top would be like, no, we're not going to join that and make 350 million. They would join too. 
And it's the same with Bayern Munich. It's the same with PSG. They Eventually, they will all join. Of course, they'll all join. PSG have got conflicting rights with TV stations and their owner is on the board of the UEFA. It's confliction, okay? They'll iron all of those creases out at some point and PSG will be added. The German clubs like Bayern Munich, they don't allow um, external owners to own more than 49% of the company so that the fans always have the final say. They might be the exception. But how long is that going to last? How long is it going to last where Bayern Munich are playing in a Bundesliga that they win every week, every year, and then a UEFA Champions League, which, I mean, who's their competition? Oh, Bayern Munich versus West Ham in the final. Bayern Munich versus Lazio in the final. It's, there's only going to be one winner here, right? And then all their top players leave to go and play in the Super League because they want more money, you know, so they can go and live in Dubai and get paid a million a week. And they're gone. So then Bayern will say, well, we're going to join too because we, we want some of that money as well. It's an inevitability, in my opinion. You know, these leagues could kick these teams out. That will only encourage them to go and do it and set it up more so. And this is one thing you've got to remember, okay, guys? People go, well, the fans will boycott it. Yeah, we, we all might. Or well, anybody my age and older. I'm 28, right? I remember the good old days. And it sounds strange to say because 28 is so young, but anybody my age or older, they don't care about it. They're looking at the next generation, these kids that are on TikTok and whatever. Like, they don't want... 50-year-old John who's down in the pub having a beer, watching the game, cheering his team on, and he buys one scarf and one shirt per year. They want Asif, who lives in Dubai, who trades Bitcoin and has two million in his account and gets a box on his birthday and brings all his friends there and they're all sipping champagne, spending 2000 for the day whilst watching the game. And there's no crowd violence because they're not like that. Football hooliganism, gone. You know, which is a good thing in a way, but... You know, it'll be away fans and home fans sat next to each other just enjoying a day's entertainment like they do in the US. It's not it's not fantastic, okay? So that's kind of my negatives. Now, I think this came about from financial fair play. I think financial fair play just really annoyed the clubs thinking, well, we're a business, we should be able to spend what we like. Who are you to tell us we can't? I think that really encouraged them, especially Man City, <clears throat> which I predicted actually a year ago. I might bring it up on screen now. I sent a text to my friend talking about this a year ago. Um, and the other thing is, I, as a Man City supporter, there's 11 men behind the ball every team we play against. Even Borussia Dortmund, there were 11 men behind the ball. It's annoying. It is annoying. It gets to a point where you think, whenever we play, if we play Real Madrid, they attack us. We attack them. It makes the game more entertaining. But we, we play against... Uh, West Ham were fantastic we played against them recently but they did have 11 men behind the ball for like 70-80% of the game and that's not just to pick on West Ham like I said I would support them if I didn't support Man City but every team does this to us Leeds they had two shots against us we had 28 or something stupid they beat us 2-1 like, and I know that's the nature of the game that is a thrilling part of football at the same time and I'm not saying that's a negative but this is why a lot of these owners said fuck this we're out we're going to go and form our own league because we're fed up with these these lower level teams who haven't spent any money that should be below us because it would be a kick in the teeth if you spent all that money, right? And they're putting 11 behind the ball and they're just counteracting, uh, counterattacking us. You can see somewhat of the point that they're making, you know, and it, Sky's TV rights, uh, Sky's uh, TV figures have dropped massively recently. People are at home, they should be watching it more. They're actually losing figures on football matches because of things like gaming, etc. People, people want Americanization. They want, you know, and I'm talking about the masses, maybe not in the UK, but some kid in China that plays video games, he's not going to sit and watch Burnley versus Stoke. He's not going to do it. He's going to get bored if Man City are playing a team and they've got 11 behind the ball. You know, they kind of want to watch these enthralling games where it's Haaland versus Mbappe, it's end to end, it's 5 4, it's FIFA. That's what they want to see. FIFA 21, the video game. That's basically what they're trying to base football on. Just fantasy football. And, you know, like I said, team, places like Sky, whatever, like broadcasting stations, they, they probably knew this was coming. They probably knew this was coming. You know, they're all on there saying this is terrible, whatever. They've probably been offered, you know, a contract to say this is how much it'll cost for broadcasting rights. Do you want to pay it or not? It would shock me if they weren't. Otherwise, I don't know why they would have gone ahead with the plan in the first place, okay? You'd have to have somebody to do that. Um, now, currently, a lot of people are saying that this is going to be just like a cup competition to replace the Champions League. Then these teams are going to stay in like the Premier League, whatever. 
that might be that might be temporary, but long term they will turn this into a league. Like I said, where it's Eastern and Western Conference straight down the middle. There's just more money when you could like it's called the European Super League right now. It will eventually be the World Super League, the World Super Football League, or something like that. That's what it will be, the World Super League, and it will be probably the biggest sport on the planet. It already is, but I'm talking in terms of like that Super Bowl feeling. It'll be that every week. There'll be halftime shows every time. There's a VAR decision. There'll be a commercial. There might be American commentators, which is really bad. I hope that doesn't happen, you know. But it will be pushed down that avenue, and um, it, it, it will ruin the game. Yeah, it will. It, 100%. It will ruin the game. But from an on, sorry guys, that's my email. From an entrepreneurial standpoint, fuck, is it going to make a lot of money? It's going to make so much money, and everyone thinks they're going to boycott it. Why? But JP Morgan have just put six billion towards it. All those clubs are going to have so much money. They're going to, you know, all the stadiums are going to improve. They're going to buy players. They're going to, it's going to be insane. Like the amount of, sh apologies guys, I don't know who's emailing me that much. But it's going to change everything. It's going to change absolutely everything. Let me see if I can turn this speaker off. There we go. And like I said, it won't be me and you that will be watching it. You know, they won't care if we watch it. It will be five friends showing up and they're from... They, li they come from Tokyo or whatever and they've travelled all the way to Dubai to watch a game and then they travel to Arsenal to watch a game and then they travel up to Man United to watch a game and the average fan can't afford it but these types of people, they spend so much money it compensates, actually makes them more money makes them more money through TV deals that's, that, I think that's the aim they just want to get into China You know, they want to have Chinese teams involved, they want to get into it they, combine China, America and Europe I mean you're set and that's the kind of money that they'll bring together. And that's exciting. Okay, that's really exciting. But it will ruin that grassroots football, is what a lot of people are saying. I have a kind of theory, okay, which is, will it become like the NFL and college football? Where this will be the NFL, the franchise, the main division, you know, so to speak. The one with 28 teams that everybody in the world watches and everybody has one team that they've picked but then everyone has a secondary team which is their local team because those two can never play each other you know like you support your state school your college your university i don't know arizona state whatever but then you also support arizona cardinals or something like that will it be in that scenario because i think that might happen i think i might support manchester city in the super league but then at the same time, I might support Bristol City because it's local to kind of the region I grew up in. And that will be my kind of British team where we retain that old school. But then you have this Hollywood-esque kind of Super League at the top. In that sense, if the Super League games are played on weekends and these college kind of games are played in the week, well... The, the smaller teams are going to get more TV rights. They're going to get shown more. They might actually have more fans long term. You know, I'm, I'm, this is wishful thinking. I'm trying to be positive. But the college economy, the college football system is massive in America. They even have video games based around it. It's that big. You know, this could become a thing in the UK where these smaller teams actually make a little bit more money. It's hard to say because I'm not sure if they will. But they actually make more money because during the week, Monday to Friday... Well, it'll probably be Monday to Thursday because I imagine the Super League is going to try and steal that Friday night slot. But Monday to Thursday, they make a ton of money because they're always on TV. They're showing it. You know, you get back from work, you've got Birmingham versus Aston Villa. You're probably going to sit down and watch it if there's nothing else on. Okay, and you're just going to have football seven days a week. But then on the weekend, you know it's ready for the big time. This is prime time TV, like kind of Champions League final. 8 p.m. on the Saturday, 7 p.m. on Saturday, whenever it kicks off, and it's Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid. And you, you think, wow, what a game. I'm going to sit down with my friends and watch this one. And it will pro probably be on a streaming platform. It won't be on my streaming platform because I don't think I'll be able to fork out the 30, 40, 50 billion needed to get the rights to this. I think it will be insane. But I might be able to get the local English stuff long term. Who knows? You know, it might drop in popularity. I can pick it up for cheap, whatever. Who knows where it goes, right? But it's craziness, guys. The whole world is changing. The whole world is changing in that sporting sense. It's become an Americanized, you know, scenario here. And there's a part of me that's obviously gutted because it's boyhood club, that sort of thing, you know, growing up and watching it with my dad. But there's also a part of me that's kind of excited to see where it does go. 
how big does it become? And yet, yeah, it'll be more for the TikTok generation. Somebody will score a goal and there'll be fireworks and high. It'll be like FIFA with blue goals and pink goals and fireworks coming out of the top of the fucking goal when somebody scores. It'll be all this bollocks, right? Halftime shows, Justin Bieber singing the national anthem at the start. It'll, just, it'll be bollocks, right? It'll be all that American shit that we see. Like when they hosted the World Cup and the goal fell down and I think it was Diana Ross or whoever, Whitney Houston, I think. Yeah, Whitney Houston. She missed the shot. She missed the penalty. Be all of that shit before games, I think, anyway. You know, so we, we'll have all that to not look forward to. But at the same time, the quality of football is going to be insane. But will it be oversaturated? Will you be seeing it so much that it will lose its kind of appeal? Who knows? But I promised you guys a way to benefit from this, okay? And that is uh, CHZ. Chilies, which is a crypto token that kind of deals with fan tokens. Okay, so they've currently got partnerships with Juventus, PSG, AC Milan have got one. Um, I can't remember who else, but you know, it's basically all the big teams. And they will now hone in on the Super League and they will get fan tokens with all of these teams. I know they're in cahoots with Man City and United, currently having chats with Barcelona and Real Madrid. Guys, if this goes through, it's going to be enormous for Chilies. They're going to skyrocket. You know, it'd be a Super League, and Chile's are responsible for all the fan tokens, which allow you to have voting rights, um, which might be taken away now based on the new rules, whatever. But you will have season ticket rights, you will have, you know, maybe things will get sent to you, you'll have meet the player kind of days, and you'll need a token to be able to get it. It's an NFT, a non fungible token. That's what it is, which is pretty cool, okay? Because there'll be a limited number, they'll be worth a lot of money, they're really cheap right now. Maybe you can um, maybe you can get a ton of them. Who knows? It's not financial advice, just my prediction. But I think Chili's is going to skyrocket, get partnerships with all of these guys, and then you know maybe it goes to the moon off the back of this. So if you're pissed off about all of this, at least you can make some decent money off the back of it. That's you know what I'm thinking. It just do you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the Quidditch World Cup in um, Harry Potter. When it was just gigantic stadiums, everyone sat together. There was no like real, he sports this team and he's over there. People coming in from all areas of the world to all play in this one place, like like the World Cup. But it's just like a spectacle, you know, fireworks. It just, it was getting silly. It's very similar, if anybody's ever played Pro Evolution, to the Master League. You know, where all the top teams were in one league and that was pretty cool. We all enjoyed that, but maybe that's because it was fantasy and it was a video game. But... It does feel very much like the Master League, which was a really fun concept, actually, thinking back. It would be, I, I guess that's just kind of ultimate team on FIFA now, but that was really cool. I really, really used to enjoy that. But who knows what happens in the future, guys. You know, fingers crossed that we come out of this with a better scenario than, you know, the, than what it's looking like right now. But it's so important to remember that sports is a scam. They're after your money. They always have been. It's evident from this here. Focus on yourself. And it's strange because the way the where football is going is very much where I preach to you guys of use it as a form of entertainment. Like when you sit courtside and you watch an NBA game, you enjoy it and then you get back to your life. Like focus on your money, your fitness and all these other things and let sport be like a the fourth, fifth, sixth thing that you think about that day. Like take care of yourself first because if you get, let's say you, you've got a £24,000 a year job and you'll spend all that money following Arsenal around the country. It doesn't actually help you that much. You know, it's very, very difficult to have a decent life. And you might be enjoying that, but the club don't care about you. And the next season, it all gets reset. It doesn't matter what you spent. They're trying to sell you another shirt and another season ticket, more merchandise. It's all a scam. And that's pretty much where it's going, where people will be detached from it. And I think the atmosphere dies. But in terms of a, in a football sense, it won't benefit the fans. In a live sense, it will benefit you because you probably won't be able to get to the games because it's so expensive, which I know sounds shit. But at the same time, sports is a scam, guys. And You might get some nice holidays out of it. I'm just trying to search for, for positives here. But I just think when you get too de attached to a team, this is what happens. People get really emotional. It destroys their lives. And that's why, in my opinion, sports is a scam. Make the most of this. Not financial advice, just my opinion. Invest in Chile, CHZ, on Binance, you can get it. I just think it goes to the moon. I think in the next two, three months, they announce partnerships with all these other clubs, and they just skyrocket. I think that's what's going to happen. But I wanted to do my little piece on it, guys. Thank you for listening, and uh, I'll see you all soon. If you want to grab our Men's Lifestyle Supplement and Male Advantage ebook, all links are in the bio.